So the next question is, what does cortisol do? Cortisol has many different effects on your body. These are just actually a few of them. So um, one of the examples is that it decreases uh, it, bone formation. So if you get enough cortisol, it actually can weaken your bones. In the liver, it stimulates release of glucose. In the muscle, it decreases amino acid uptake. In the pancreas, it has effects that counteract the effects of insulin. So insulin drops down glucose. Um, liver, the cortisol increases it and antagonizes the effects of insulin. And finally, it actually has some pretty complicated effects on fat tissue. Initially, it promotes the breakdown of fat. It also, ultimately, over time, can promote deposition of fat in different places. So there's all these effects on these different organs there's also, as people mentioned, there's very profound effects on the immune system. So anyone who is working in medicine, and most of us even outside medicine, are familiar with this concept that steroids, and usually when we're talking about here, I'm talking about steroids that are related to cortisol, they have very potent anti-inflammatory effects. They're used all the time in medicine because of that. Um, and they affect all these different, these are different kinds of immune cells in fairly complex ways. The overall effect, particularly in high doses, is to decrease inflammatory responses. But as just a note on how complex this is, this is a macrophage here, so a very key part of the immune system. And you can see here that low doses of cortisol actually increase the activity of macrophages, high doses decrease. And that's actually true for some of the other cells. You need enough cortisol to get some of these cells really mobilized, but higher levels have the opposite effect and start to downregulate those cells, make them less active.